This is the Jill Bennett Show on News Talk 980 CKNW. 9.34 on this Sunday morning. Thank you so much for being with us. You might have heard this story in the news this past couple of weeks. It has to do with the Human Rights Tribunal here in B.C. And it ruled that the B.C. Veterinary Medical Association systemically discriminated against 13 Indo-Canadian veterinarians. They were all op- operating clinics in the Lower Mainland. And joining us to talk a bit more about the ruling and what this means is Aleem Barmal, Executive Director of the Community Legal Assistance Society. Aleem, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the ruling and maybe give us a bit of the background, uh, what led to the, the complaint being uh, filed in the first place? Sure, I'll give you a, a bit of background. It's actually a very interesting uh, story, I believe. Uh, so uh, one of the main uh, protagonists uh, for our clients, his name is Dr. Hakim Bular, and he, he's one of the longest-standing Indo-Canadian veterinarians in the province. And uh, he's a pioneer of what he would refer to as uh, low-cost clinics in the Lower Mainland. So, uh, so in the mid '90s, uh, he was, uh, uh, you know, he was certified to practice here, and he opened up his first clinic. And he was looking for a way to be competitive and break into what he thought was a kind of closed market. And uh, he wanted to open a clinic that he thought people could afford. And he. Uh, his first clinic, uh, Atlas Animal Hospital, it's very popular, East Van, Coover, it's located at uh, 41st and Fraser. Uh, he opened his first clinic there and uh, charged lower prices uh, and developed relationships with sort of animal welfare groups and would, you know, uh, offer them even deeper discounts. And uh, he was, his business was flourishing. He started expanding his clinics. Uh, he was getting a lot of good press. Uh, in 2004, the Georgia Strait named him best in, ambassador to the animal kingdom. Uh, they cited his work among animal welfare groups and low-income pet owners. Uh, 2005, he was named uh, through re- reader, poll reader, sorry, reader, uh, poll of readers as the uh, best veterinary clinic. Uh, and then he started to expand his clinics uh, based on this model of lower prices extended hours of service and building relationships with animal welfare groups. And uh, he'd hire uh, veterinarians from India who had difficulty finding positions elsewhere. And uh, eventually uh, our, we allege that he was uh, being met with very fierce resistance uh, and started being targeted by the uh, BC Veterinary Medical Association. And... Uh, so, uh, you know, part of our allegations were uh, there was documentation to show that there was a strategy devised to uh, combat a fear of influx of uh, these vets, mainly from the Punjab, through uh, targeted inspections, uh, uh, targeted uh, complaints process, and the imposition of uh, uh, an unreasonably high English language standard. And so... Substantially, most of our allegations were uh, upheld at the tribunal after years of hearing. Uh, and uh, the tribunal, some of the key findings of the tribunal were that uh, the BCVMA, we had alleged there was a smear campaign involved against our clients, and the, uh, the tribunal held that uh, the BCVMA, the BC Veterinary Medical Association, had tolerated and facilitated a discussion of wide-ranging race-based allegations about our clients that uh, that played a role in their dealings with our clients and that uh, uh, it poisoned the relationship and which they in turn blamed on our clients saying they were just playing the race card uh, another key finding was that uh, the BCMA had uh, you know established an unreasonably high English language uh, standard that was targeted at our clients. Uh, there was findings that there were recordings of people in position of influence at the college, that, or is now sorry, it's now called the College of Veterinarians. So I, I sometimes use the term interchangeably, but uh, that uh, you know, making a lot of uh, promoting stereotypes uh, based on race against our clients, and. Uh, so those were some of the key findings, and she awarded uh, over three hundred thousand uh, dollars against uh, f- in favor of our clients collectively, and 
ordered a number of uh, uh, systemic remedies, if you will, uh, such as uh, uh, independent review of some of their disciplinary complaint files, posting of an anti-discrimination policy on the association website, uh, provi- uh, requirements for certain training uh, for staff and contractors uh, with the college. Uh, do you think, too, uh, the case, uh, it struck me that... Um the fact that that race came into play here, because, uh, like you said, this was the, it sounds like anyway that they were first targeted because this was a group of veterinarians uh, charging lower fees, uh, surely in an industry where there's no regulation on fees to be charged, there must be others that are trying to undercut other vets in the system. Well, we had uh, characterized this case as a when we presented it as an economic issue that uh, very quickly became racialized and uh, so I think that was a, an initial cause of concern, uh, but you know, part of the discussion around our clients. I mean, there's recordings of the uh, chair of the conduct review committee at the time that the tribunal found uh, was uh, uh, promoting racial stereotypes. Uh, you know, uh, making statements that. Uh, uh, you know, only half of the veterinarians from most of our clients were from the Punjab region. Uh, you know, making comments that uh, half of our only half of the Indo-Canadian, you know, people coming from the Punjab veterinarians were decent people. Uh, that uh, you know, Dr. Buller, who I mentioned, would uh, who is you know a main competitor of this vet uh, of the chair of the conduct review committee, he'd say that uh, he was saying that he'd. Uh, hire other incompetent veterinarians, including unlicensed ones. Uh, after the English language standard uh, was established, our clients had a demonstration, and there was a meeting to discuss the English language standard. It quickly devolved into, uh, you know, a lot of racial stereotyping about our clients. <clears throat> they said uh, there was talk at that council meeting of our clients uh, engaging in physical intimidation, promoting violence, running sweatshops, even the term evil, uh, had been bandied about. And the tribunal member found that, uh, you know, this was all unsubstantiated. She found that, uh, in fact, uh, the, there's no credible evidence that the working conditions at our clients' clinics were poor or could reflect sweatshop conditions, that the veterinarians who work there testified they were paid acceptable salaries, worked reasonable hours, and she actually found the opposite, that our clients assisted uh, other Indo-Canadian veterinarians with their employment and business opportunities. And, uh, Emil, we only have about a minute uh, or two left. Uh, I know that uh, Dr. Buller has said that he feels vindicated, that he's a good vet, and, and he wants people to know that he's a good vet. Are you pleased or, or satisfied with the outcome of this? We're very relieved with the outcome. It's been a long haul. One of the vets mentioned to me that uh, when the hearing started, my uh, son who was born that year. He's now eight, so it gives you an idea. And uh, myself and my co-counsel Clea Parfit, we were, you know, eating, uh, you know, sort of uh, living and breathing this case for several years. Uh, so we're we're very relieved that since finally uh, we've got, uh, you know, our clients have their allegations have been substantiated, and uh, we're very pleased with the result. Uh, the latest uh, sort of release from the college, however, is that they're you know, they strongly disagree with this decision. Uh, they don't believe uh, that the findings are uh, correct. And so I, they're giving every signal that they'll probably continue to challenge this decision and will likely challenge it in court. Well, we will uh, we'll see what happens next and uh, be following up on that. Aleem, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this. No problem. That is okay. Aleem Barmal, Executive Director of the Community Legal Assistance Society. We'll take a break. We are keeping with the animal theme for the next part of the program, though. We're going to check in with the Wildlife Defense League and why they want Air Canada and West.